We are told in today's gospel to prepare the ways of the Lord, make straight his paths. Advent was a time, or is a time, of preparation. And St. John goes on to echo the prophet Isaiah and to add some more imagery to that idea of preparation. He says, fill every valley and every mountain and hill shall be brought low. And the Latin word for bringing something low is humiliabitur. And I'm sure we can hear that word humility in that word, humiliabitur. And that's what humility is, to bring something down. He also says, make the crooked straight and the rough ways smooth. What does all this mean? It's obviously not about, you know, getting road machinery out and building roads or fixing roads, like we've also been seeing this north-south freeway being built now for a good 10 or 15 years. It's been a very long time. Obviously, St. John is not talking about that. He must be talking about it spiritually. So this was the purpose of our Advent sacrifice, of our Advent devotions. We are trying to prepare for the Lord. And... Perhaps this would be a good time to mention that the origin of the word Christmas came from the two words Christ's Mass. Well, why would that be? Because isn't the Mass offered practically every day of the year? And we are told that What makes Christmas stand out is that from the most ancient times, every priest was allowed to say three masses on Christmas Day. Not allowed on any other day of the year. Even when there's no necessity. Now you'll notice sometimes a priest will have to say a mass twice on a Sunday, maybe even three times, because people would miss Mass otherwise. Today is unusual because we have three priests here, so each one of us offering one Mass. But on Christmas Day, even though there's no necessity, each priest is told, you may offer Mass three times today. And you know, Catholics would make it a point to go to all three Masses. And you see in the Roman Missal a Mass for midnight, a Mass for dawn, and then Mass later on in the morning. Late In later centuries, priests were allowed to offer three Masses on All Souls Day, again, even if there's no necessity, three Masses. But that came later. So this idea of three Masses on Christmas, and of course it's not obligatory, but What a beautiful, fervent picture that made when you'd have Catholics attending, you know, all three Masses on Christmas Day in the ancient times. But the three Masses portrayed the three types of birth of our Lord. And each one, each one represents it in some way. There's the eternal birth of our Lord, or of the Son of the Father. Remember, the Father begets the Son. It's been going on eternally and will continue eternally. It's a mystery how that is, but we call Jesus, the, even before he became man, the only begotten Son of the Father. And then there's the birth of our Lord In time, it did happen some 2,000 years ago where the Son, being eternally begotten by the Father, now came down on earth and was born in time. And this only can happen 
did happen once. He was born of the Virgin Mary. And then the third birth of our Lord, as spiritual writers explain, is when he is born in our hearts. When, some, when through faith and love, someone says, I believe in thee, Jesus. Live in me, Jesus. I love thee, Jesus. That's a very real kind of birth, is it not? It happened, first of all, when we were baptized, but this kind of birth is actually repeated many times in our lives. And when we think of Advent preparing for Christmas, it's for a special birth of Jesus in our hearts on Christmas Day. And again, that was the purpose of our Advent preparation. And the better we prepare, the, the more this or the more, the better this birth, you might say, of Jesus will be in our hearts. So again, the three masses on Christmas Day represent those three different births. And English Catholics, many centuries ago, called the day Christ's Mass, Christmas. And the name still is used to this day. So how do we prepare for Christmas? Well, not only our prayers, our good works, our, our sacrifices, but our virtues. And it seems to me that St. John is specifically talking about the virtue of humility. And so let's keep this in mind as we prepare for Christmas. How do we practice humility? It's a difficult virtue. And... Sometimes we don't realize how we're falling into pride here or there. How do we fall into pride? Well, maybe by exalting ourselves above others, comparing ourselves to others, having a holier-than-thou attitude, you know, sitting in judgment and condemnation. Yes, sometimes people commit sins, even much bigger sins that we've committed, but still, let's remember... We are sinners too. And we will never lose the need of saying, Oh God, have mercy on me, a sinner. We may be in a position where we have to address the faults or sins of others. If you're an authority, it's your duty to, in your children, for example, as parents, you do have to be aware of their failings and correct them. Someone else can be an authority, a priest in authority, religious superiors in authority. It's their duty. But at the same time, always conscious, I am a sinner. Have mercy upon me. We have to remember that everything good we have comes from God. If we forget to offer thanks to God, we could be falling into pride, saying, look how great I am. Look how good I am. This is offensive to God. God resists the proud, but gives his grace to the humble. God allows us to get humbled sometimes, humiliated. It's not easy for us. It's painful to our human pride to be humbled. But as Father Clement Kubish used to say, no humility without humiliations. So God allows them to happen to us, and as difficult as it may be, it's an opportunity to practice humility. I remember also some, when something Father Clement once said. He said, Blessed Mother, please keep me humble, and if I ever stop being humble, please clobber me. I remember him, too, when he made a mistake in a sermon uh, correcting himself when something was brought to his attention the following Sunday. He says, I, I made a mistake. I'm still learning. And he had been a priest for 40 years. I'm still learning. He acknowledged where, where he had failed or had, done, had made a mistake or done something wrong. That's always an exercise in humility. And what do we see in the stable? 
the utmost humility. Almighty God being laid in a manger. What's a manger? It's a feeding trough for animals. No better place was available? No. So how can we pride ourselves when we see such humility in the stable? Jesus, meek and humble of heart, make my heart like unto thine. What a great prayer to say many times throughout our lives to help, to help what? To bring the mountains and the hills low, to straighten out the crooked and to smooth out the rough ways. Let's think of our hearts as a stable. Can't think of our hearts as a palace, can we? You know, we're so holy and so good that I've got a palace for Jesus in my heart. No, we can't say we have a palace. We have a stable. And let's ask Blessed Mother to help us prepare this stable. See, she and St. Joseph we're told that's all that's all that's available. Go out to the stable. But Our Lady fixed it up as much as she could. St. Joseph fixed it up as much as they could. Let's ask her. We ask St. Joseph too. Help us to fix up the stable of our heart with virtues. They made the best of it. They made it better than it was. They made it as nice as they could. So we can certainly think that way. We've committed many a sin. We've offended God. We don't, but still, let's not just let it be broken down and not spiritually prepared. That was what our Advent was for. We were cleaning up the stable, fixing up the stable of our hearts. So humility difficult virtue, but so pleasing to God. Some will even say that it was the humility of Our Lady. And remember, she never, ever sinned. And yet, she was more humble than all of us put together. She recognized how anything good she had came from God. And so the humble handmaid of the Lord will certainly help us in that virtue of humility to prepare for the birth, that special rebirth of Jesus that we long for in our hearts this Christmas day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.